The skeletal system of the human body, which consists of bone and cartilage, is a very important component because it doesn't only protect our organs, store important minerals, and create blood cells, but it also creates an overall framework of our body that allows us to actually move. Now, bone does not actually initiate voluntary motion. Bone is actually associated with, it interacts with skeletal muscle. And it's the contraction of the skeletal muscle that causes the movement of our bone and which creates our voluntary motion as we know. It's a motion that we can actually consciously control. So, it's the interaction between our bone and the skeletal muscle which is ultimately controlled by by our nervous system that allows us to move in any way that we wish to actually move. Now, skeletal muscle does not actually attach directly to bone. Our skeletal, much, our skeletal muscle attaches to our tendons and it's the tendons that consist of collagen fibers that actually attach to our bone. Now tendons should not be confused with ligaments. Ligaments are those fibers that connect bone to other bones but tendons are those fibers that connect our skeletal muscle to bone. So tendons and muscles basically work together to move our bones and that ultimately controls the movement of our body. It allows us to move in a wide range of different ways. Now there are many examples of muscle bone systems in our body and the example we're going to look at is the movement of our arm and this involves two very important types of muscles, the biceps muscle and the triceps muscle muscle as well as all these bones as shown in the diagram. So basically this is our bicep muscle. This bone is the humerus bone and the and the muscle behind the humerus bone is our uh, tricep muscle. Now when we actually create this motion what happens is the humerus muscle does not actually move or um, the humerus bone does not actually move and this bone is known as our immovable bone while the bone inside this portion of the arm do actually move with respect to our body so the bones inside this are the radius bone and our ulna so this entire bone is the humerus bone. In the back we have the tricep, in the front we have the bicep, this is our radius, this is our ulna, and these two bones are the movable bones. They're the bones that actually move when that muscle contraction actually takes place. Now the point where the muscle actually attaches to our bone that does not move and the attachment takes place via our tendons, this is known as the origin and this side where the origin is located is known as our proximal end while the other end is known as our uh, distal end and this location is known as our insertion. So the point where the muscle attaches to our movement bone via the tendon that is known as our insertion. So the radius and the ulna are the movable bones. Our humerus is the immovable bone and this is our proximal end. It contains the origin. This is the distal end. It contains our insertion. Now of course we actually have the joints that allow the movement of these bones with respect to each other. So we have the joint that connects our humerus to our shoulder bone, the flat bone known as the scapula and we have the joint in our elbow as shown. Now one of these muscles is known as an agonist. The other muscle is known as an antagonist and these roles basically change with respect to the type of motion that we are actually creating and we'll see what that means in just a moment. So the biceps tricep system works together in an antagonist manner. So the triceps bicep system is controlled antagonistically and what that basically means is when one of these muscles contracts 
the other muscle actually stretches, it, uh, it elongates, and vice versa. So let's take a look at diagram A and diagram B. So let's suppose I have my arm oriented as shown, and I wish to pull it, so I wish to flex my arm and, and pull it towards my body. So basically what's happening, uh, what's happening is the central nervous system is creating an electrical signal. Our brain initiates an electrical signal. It passes through the motor neuron found in the somatic nervous system that actually innervates our bicep muscle. And that creates a contraction that initiates an action potential which creates the muscle contraction in the bicep. So as I'm pulling my, uh, as I'm pulling these two movable bones, my radius and my ulna towards my body, the bicep is increasing in thickness, it's contracting. And at the same time that the radius is decreasing between this bone and, and our hinge, our joint, our muscle in the back, our tricep muscle is actually elongating, it's stretching out, it's extending. Ending. And the muscle that contracts is known as our agonist, while the muscle that is elongating is known as our antagonist. So when the angle de is decreasing and when I'm pulling my bones closer to my body, our bicep contracts, it's the agonist, while this, our tricep, is elongating, it's our antagonist. On the other hand, let's look at diagram B in which the opposite is taking place. So now I want to increase my angle between these bones and my joint hinge and I basically want to move these two movable bones away from my body. And to basically, for this to actually take place, the electrical signal now must basically cause the contraction of the tricep muscle. So the tricep muscle thickens, it basically shortens as a result of that contraction, of the contraction of the sarcomeres inside the skeletal muscle. At the same time, the bicep is stretching out it's basically elongating and you can see that as this motion takes place this muscle basically stretches out this muscle is the muscle that contracts in this case this muscle is our antagonist while this muscle our contracting muscle is our agonist so basically the bicep can act as the agonist, but it can also act as our antagonist. So in diagram A, the somatic nervous system carries that electrical signal that was created by the brain and it brings it to our bicep muscle, which causes the contraction of that muscle. So as this muscle contracts, it causes this muscle to basically stretch out and it elongates as seen in the following diagram. Diagram. In diagram B, the tricep muscle fibers contract and move the radius and the ulna bone, the movable bones, away from the body. This causes the fibers in the bicep to actually stretch out and lengthen. So we have contraction, elongation, elongation, contraction. Now, the muscle that contracts is known as the agonist. In this case, it's the bicep. In this case, it's the tricep. The muscle that elongates is known as our antagonist. In this case, it's the tricep. In this case, it's the bicep. Now, we have many other muscles involved in this motion, and these muscles, these other muscles that help the bicep and the tricep, are known as our synergist muscles. So we also have synergist muscles that are involved in aiding the, in aiding the agonist antagonist muscles. Now we can also refer to these muscles in a different way. We also have flexor muscles and extensor muscles. So the flexor muscle is the muscle that contracts and decreases the angle at the joint with respect to our movable arm, uh, our movable bone, while the extensor is the muscle that lengthens and increases the angle at the joint. 
So in this particular case, our bicep is acting as our flexor because it is decreasing that angle with respect to the joint and our arm that is moving. In this case, our, uh, the bicep is acting as the extensor because as we are extending our arm, the angle basically increases and that's exactly why our bicep is an extensor in this case. So we see any given muscle can act as an agonist but it can also act as an antagonist uh, by the same token it can act as an extensor but it can also act as a flexor in other cases so when we flex this acts as our flexor when we extend this acts as our extensor as described just a moment ago so we see muscles by themselves do not actually create the motion muscles actually contract and cause the bones to actually move and so it's the interaction between our nervous system our bone system and our skeletal muscle that creates our movement that we are consciously in control of